What you're getting here are uh, 20 lessons that I've learned over 20 years in business. So let's just jump right in. Here's what I've learned from 20 years in the speaking business. And in fact, I think it's been more now, but I, you know, I'm just kind of sum it up here. 20 years in the speaking business. Here we go. Number one, look, you don't need to be perfect to get started. You just need to get started. I think for a lot of people, this is a big deal, a big deal. They feel like, well, look, I don't have my branding down. I don't have my sales engine, my sales machine working. I don't have a website. I don't have a CRM. I'm just getting started on social media. I haven't crafted my perfect keynote. You don't have to be perfect to get started. You just need to get started. If you wait until everything is so-called perfect, you'll be waiting a long time. You'll be waiting forever. So whatever you wanna do, do not deprive yourself or the world of your message. Just get out there and get started. I also believe that you've gotta be in the right place at the right time with the right attitude. To me, it's mindset over skill set. Again, you can be a great speaker, but you're maybe not doing the right things. So you've gotta be in the right place, so that's good fortune, right place, right time, but with the right attitude. You know, there's this expression that says, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. I really believe that. You've gotta be prepared. When I first came to Singapore about 14 years ago, I came here, I had nothing, right? I had nothing, I had no one, I had no network, I had no connections, no track record. I had never done any business in, in Singapore before. But I worked really hard and I got my first little speaking engagement at a small networking event. And there were about 15 people there, okay? 15, I've since spoken to 15,000 people in Jakarta, but there were 15 people at this event. But I'll tell you something, I had the right attitude, I delivered, I just crushed it. I gave it my all. I, I imagine, what if this was 15,000 people? I'm gonna give these 15 people the best of what I've got. One of the people in the audience, he worked at an enterprise development center at the Singapore Malay Chamber of Commerce and Industry. He came up to me after my talk and said, Tom, I love this. I run programs at the EDC and we're always looking for great presenters. Would you like to speak to our members? I said, sure. All of a sudden, the EDC at SMCCI is promoting me to their members, promoting me in their database. And then I started to get noticed. I started to get visible. I was smart. Right place, right time, right attitude. Something I've learned as well is you've got to deliver on your promises. Now, most people deliver excuses. They complain about why things aren't on time. They didn't do a good job. Oh, my audio's not working. My video's not working. My laptop's too slow. The audience wasn't engaged. You know, the topic, you know, they always have an excuse for everything. Nothing is ever their fault. Well, that's not gonna help you in the long run. Maybe you'll feel good short term. We've gotta take ownership and responsibility of everything we do. So be sure that you deliver on your promises. When you say something, do something. Under promise and over deliver, where most people are just delivering excuses. You've gotta focus on your long term dreams, especially during short term nightmares. My gosh, this COVID situation has shown us that things can change overnight. We can't ever lose sight on our long-term goals because one day you'll just wake up and it's 5, 10, 15, 20 years later and you've been focusing on the now but not the new and not the next. So you've always got to focus on your long-term dreams and make sure that you're always moving one step closer to your long-term goals, especially during short-term nightmares. Something that I've also realized is that you always need to change what isn't working. So many people are overly invested in, in, in what they've already done. Oh, well, I've always done it this way, or this is my signature keynote and I'll never change it, no matter what the market's telling you, <laughs> right? Maybe they don't like it. Maybe you love it, but they don't love it. So you've always got to change what isn't working. If it's not working for you, you need to change it. So every quarter, reevaluate different components of your speaking business. What's working? What's not? What do I keep? What do I get rid of? What do I change? What do I improve? What do I tweak? 
You've always got to be thinking about innovation. So you've always got to change what isn't working. Now, at the same time, never change what is working, <laughs> okay? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So many people get excited by this shiny object syndrome. Anything new out there, they wanna try something new. Oh my gosh, I've gotta do this and that and this and that. And they just dabble in it or they go all in at the expense of things that are working well for them. Please don't sacrifice the core, the essence of your speaking business because of something new and exciting. Don't start talking about crypto and blockchain and NFTs just because it's a hot new topic. <laughs> if it doesn't fit within your wheelhouse, don't go there. So I'm a big believer that you've got to dig a hole, you know, three meters wide, but 30 meters deep. Own your space, pick your lane and stay in that. Having said that, you're not as great as you think you are. <laughs> There's always someone who's better than you are. Be humble. Be gracious. Be grateful for what you have. I wake up every morning, I've got an attitude of gratitude. I am so lucky that I get paid very well to do something that I love to do. There's always something that you can learn. Now, at the same time, asking for help is a sign of strength. Sometimes we need to ask for help. It's not weakness, it's strength. Sometimes it can be a lonely business, a lonely profession. When I first started, it was just me. For several years, it was just me running my business. I had no one else. But then I realized I needed help. So I asked my wife if she would quit her job and join my business. Now, 10 years later, she's our COO. I'm the CEO and she manages a team of about eight people on our team because we realized that we needed help. We couldn't do it on our own. And that's a sign of strength, not weakness. So ask sooner rather than later. I think that's super important. Now, in the same way that you're not as good as you think you are and you gotta be humble, guess what? You're not as bad as you think you are. Maybe you have the opposite. Maybe you have what's known as imposter syndrome and you're like oh man i'm not as good as those other speakers i can never be that good am i a fake am i a phony are people going to believe me and my message i don't think i have what it takes all of us started with zero paid speaking gigs including the guy that's talking right now so you're not as bad as you think you are be proud of yourself be proud of yourself for even having two paid speaking engagements that's two more than you had before so be proud, be proud of the accomplishments you've made. Running, building, growing your own business is difficult. It's hard work. Not many people can do it. So you're not as bad as you think you are. Be proud. I'm proud of you and I'm glad you're here. And I know that you can do it. So keep up the good work. And like I told you before about needing to ask for help, there's no such thing as a self-made person. You know, speakers, are seen on the big stage, right? So they see us on stage. You see me on YouTube videos. You don't see my team, but I got a team of like 10 people behind me. There's no such thing as a self-made person, never. Like Marshall Goldsmith said, and I met him a few years back. He said, what got you here won't get you there. So what got you to a certain point won't get you to the next point on your own. You need help. There's no such thing as a self-made person. Scale, grow, leverage, include people on your team. That is probably the number one thing that's gonna take your speaking business to the next level. Not crafting a better keynote. Now, maybe, maybe it is crafting a better keynote, but you maybe won't be able to do it on your own. Get some help, form a mastermind group, ask, get a mentor, ask for people that have great keynotes to give you some tips on how to improve your keynote. The point that I'm making is you can't do it on your own. And you've done it this far, well done, I'm proud of you. And it's time to take it to the next level. Remember that your customers put your food on the table. Sometimes customers can be annoying, maybe they're demanding, maybe they want so much of your time. <laughs> and maybe we get frustrated from time to time with customers. But please remember, they're the ones who put food on your table. They're the ones that put that money in your bank account. They're the ones that pay for your home, your car, 
your food, your clothes, your vacations, everything you've got, you got from your customers. It's not you. So please be grateful because they're the ones that have put food on your table. And do what you do best, but delegate the rest. So this is all part of scale, isn't it? This is how you grow your business. And something I realized years ago is there are some things that I am awesome at and I'm the best at in this company and some things that I am not good at. Uh, time management, organization, uh, project management, staying on top of jobs and who needs what when. I'm not good at that. Put me on stage, get me to speak, I crush it. Get me to support my sales team. So I'm a great salesperson, as you can probably imagine. That's what we do. I'm great at sales. So I used to do all the sales. But to grow and scale, I had to bring people on the team. I had to delegate that function. So now what I do best is coaching my team on how to sell for me so that I can focus on delivering. So right now, while I'm speaking to you, I got my sales team hard at work. I've got people on the team who send out invoices, who collect the money, right? So I can just focus on what I do best, which is serving our customers. So do what you do best and delegate the rest. Wow. Where do you want your business to go in 2022? Do you want to make incremental commitments? Do you want to make 5% more than you did last year? Maybe 10? Are you tired of that? Do you want to double your revenue? Do you want to maybe triple or quadruple your revenue this year? You can do it. It's absolutely possible. Take big risks if you want big rewards. What are you going to do? Maybe the big risk is I'm going to go into a new market. We doubled down on our sales and marketing during the crisis. We went hard on marketing. We went hard on sales because we knew everything would be cheaper. We could get trainers to work with us because their rates would be lower because they were less in demand. You got to think smart. It's like Warren Buffett says, <laughs> be fearful when everyone's greedy, but be greedy when everyone's fearful. The key to success is to be a big fish in a small pond. What? What does that even mean? Big fish, small pond. Hmm. Maybe I should strive to be the number one sales training provider in Singapore. I don't have to start with the world. That's how you become a specialist. Guess what? Specialists charge more. If you go to your GP, your general doctor, they know a little bit of everything, but not a whole lot of anything, and they don't charge very much. But if you have a problem that needs to be solved, you go to a specialist. Mm. And specialists charge more. I've always wanted to be a specialist, not a generalist. How about you? Do you speak on five or 10 topics or do you speak on one? What are you known for? Are you the answer to a question? Be a big fish in a small pond. There's plenty, plenty to go around. And I love this proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with others. I love this. So look, you want to be fast. You want to be super responsive. You want to be turning on a dime. You do it on your own. You can do that. But if you really want to go far, go with others. Build a team. Support each other. That is how you win the long game, not the short game. It's the difference between the 100-meter sprint and the 400 meter relay with a team. Think about that. And as you build your team and you add people, most people get this wrong. And what we need to do is hire for attitude, but train for aptitude. But most people flip it, they do the other way around. What they do is they try to hire people that have the aptitude, all the right skills. And they figure, well, if their attitude isn't quite there, maybe I'll send them on a workshop on positivity or mindset. Uh-uh. Attitude is not something you learn in a one-day program. Sorry. Attitude, your personality, your mindset, is something that has been established probably since you were 18 years old. And it probably won't change. People don't change. Sorry, they just don't. And if they do, it takes a really long time. So don't hire people who have the skills but a bad attitude. Hire people that have a great attitude, willing to learn and grow, and they're positive. They're willing to learn, and then train them up with the skills. Hire for attitude, train for aptitude. 
<laughs> and part of this is as you're building out your team, whether it's hiring or just engaging people freelance part-time, it doesn't matter. Hire slow, but fire fast. Most leaders do the opposite. They're so stressed out and they wanna to go to market quickly, so they hire fast and they're stuck with these people for a long time and they fire slow. I've never ever met a leader who regretted firing someone too soon. I meet a lot of them that go, ah, I should have let that person go a long time ago. You know what I'm talking about, right? Why do we wait? Hire slow, take your time, get the right people on your team. This is your business, don't rush. I'm also a big believer in output over outcomes. So a lot of people, they focus on the outcome, the result, right? Did we hit target? Did I achieve my goals? That's really important, yes, but it's not everything. What you need to do is to break down your outcome into smaller outputs. What are the small activities that you need to be doing every single day, output, that will get you to outcomes? You can't control the outcome. So. You know, if my goal is to be a $10 million company in five years, I can't control that outcome, but I can control my output. How many calls will my team make? How many appointments will we schedule? How many demos will we do? How much marketing will we do? How much will we spend on this, that, or the other? That's output, that's activity. Calls, emails, voicemails, LinkedIn messages. That's output, that can be measured, and nobody can stop me from doing that. You can do the output. You can't control the outcome, but you can darn well control your output. So focus on what you can control. If you put the output, there's a good chance the outcome will come. Focus on output. And one of my favorite sayings is persistence overcomes resistance. If you're feeling resistance from others, from the market, from your friends, from your family, from customers, resistance from competitors, persistence overcomes resistance. Don't give up, don't quit, never say die, never surrender, never stop, never say no. No isn't no, no means not yet, not sure, not ready, not convinced. Don't take no for an answer, persist and resist and keep going and you will win. This is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Are you in this for the long game? How resilient are you? How persistent are you? The answer to that question will be the determinant of your success. And finally, my friends, something I've learned is it takes 20 years to be an overnight success. <laughs> 20 years to be an overnight success. It doesn't just happen. A lot of people, wow, Tom, you've got 30,000 followers on LinkedIn and you're the number one this and look at you and your videos are awesome. How'd you do it? 20 years of blood, sweat and tears. Are you in it for the long haul? Don't give up. Start now, keep going, and you're on your way to achieving your goals. If you wanna take your sales skills to the next level and learn how to master the entire sales process, join Soko Academy and get certified in Soko Selling. The link is in the notes.